Welcome to another episode of Pony 411. This is episode 197 for the week of September 17th. I am Alcatraz, and with me is Nemesis. Oh! Yes. It's been kind of an interesting week. A little bit. A little bit. Bunch of stuff came out. Some of it's game related. Metroid! Yeah, you got your got your new copy of Metroid. Metroid! <laughs> He's a little bit happy about that one. Yes. But we had some interesting stuff happen in the pony world, mainly around news. Some news came out this week. Movies coming up. Movies coming soon. It is It is right around the corner. Yeah, it is. Ugh. Yeah. So yes, so we got another episode for you today. We've got, like I mentioned, a bunch of news to go through. We've got three comics to talk about oh, this geez. week, because that's how timing worked out. Thanks, USPS. Before we get through that, we've also got another episode of Pony to talk about, the new one that came out. And we got a little bit of fan content afterwards. So, as usual, let's jump into the news to start with. And if you would like to follow along, you can find all of our show notes at pony411.libsyn.com slash show notes. Remember, that's L-I-B-S-Y-N. So go there, click the link for this episode, and let's get to this. In convention news, Nightmare Nights has announced Tony Fleeks. Yeah. Yep. That's going to be their last ones. Yep, last Nightmare Nights. Last Nightmare Nights. In fandom news, a new Seeds of Kindness album has been announced. This one's titled A Healing Touch. The album and its fundraiser will release December 9th. More details at the link. The Legends of Equestria open access release is released. And they've also released a short little trailer video for the story with it. Yep. It's the thing. They've already added, released a patch, too. Yep. They'll be doing that throughout. Remember, this is still beta, but it's the open beta now, basically. But yeah. it's permanently open. It's not like just a weekend. A web-based pony karaoke game has been released, though it is still in development. It's like my little karaoke, except through the web. Yeah, play with your friends. It's browser-based karaoke over the internet, so that's kind of neat. There is apparently now an official MLP movie style OC creator. Yep. We've played with it if you haven't seen already. It is kind of limited, but you it can is tweak very with limited. it if you know what you're doing. Yes. But it's kind of neat. Yep. You can play with it. And the next Ponies at Dawn album has been announced. It's called Anthology. Not a huge amount of details officially available yet, but it looks like it should be coming out in a couple weeks. Yep. Looking forward to that. It's always good music in there. Into merchandise news, Toys R Us has an exclusive MLP movie-themed update to its Monopoly Jr. game. Yeah. They've had a pony version of Monopoly Jr., but this is now adding in, you know... Movie stuff. It's an updated version for movie style, even though I think some of the pieces are still the old pieces. Pretty much. The friendship sets listed a while back on Entertainment Earth now have official images available. A bunch of new, quote, fashion doll listings have shown up on Amazon. Yes. Yeah. Tons. A huge list of them. They're all listed as fashion doll, but not much else info there. However, a couple of those new listings do have images, including the baby hippogriff flutter cloud and some movie style Twilight and Peaky fashion style brushables. But the rest of them are just, like, listings with no images or anything else. No information at all. Maybe, except for maybe sizes, so you might be able to guess at some categorization there. Yeah, pretty much. Some new pony soaps have also appeared on Amazon, including Pinky and Dash bar soaps and some crazy foam soap things as well. So, yes. You can now rub Rainbow Dash all over your body. We'll just skip right <laughs> over that one. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, no. if you want to rub a pony on all over you, you can. I, I, I knew that joke was going to happen, too. But yes, the crazy foam one, they're just in little bottles. It's got like... Are you okay over there? Or are you just dying from your own joke? No, I'm just thinking about it. Just keep going. <laughs> anyway, the crazy foam soaps are in like foam dispenser bottles with different characters on them. There's four different ones. I think it's like Pinky, Dash, Twilight, and I think Fluttershy? 
But those ones are like body wash, shampoo, and conditioner combined in one. Huh. Yeah. Kohl's has a new line of My Little Chromies figures. <laughs> Chrome <Sounds> ponies. Like, <laughs> yes. Chromies. It almost sounds like some sort of drug. <laughs> Where's iced tea? <laughs> now it's lemonade. <laughs> yeah. They're chrome figures that you can draw on and you make your like your own recolors. Yep. It's a, like a, a Twilight and a Dash figure. Four new books have been revealed with covers and synopses. Got two Ponyville Mysteries books. One of them's book number six. We don't actually have a t- another title. It's got a cover with the CMC on it. There's another Ponyville Mysteries, The Cursed Crusaders. Skulu and Starlight on the cover of that one. Ew. Book number six description. Join the Cutie Mark Crusaders, Sweetie Belle, Apple Bloom, and Scootaloo as they read mysteries, legends, ghost stories, and every other kind of tale that makes a main stand on end. <laughs> From Ponyville school classmates to Rainbow Dash to the Princess of the Night herself, you never know who else or what else awaits as they set out to solve seeming supernatural mysteries around Ponyville. The other Ponyville mysteries description is the same. Yep. We also have a little kid's book called We Are Unicorns, starring apparently Trixie, Rarity, and Starlight. There is no real description on that one, other than no. it's, you know... Unicorns! Yep, unicorns, and it's one of those level one you reader books. You got two books. bad ones there. Wow. <laughs> you mean Trixie and Rarity, right? No. <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> and the other book is titled Flut- Beyond Equestria, Fluttershy Balances the Scales. And this is definitely a movie theme book because it's, you know, sea ponies on the cover. Its description, an exciting original middle grade series featuring My Little Pony and the continuing story from the upcoming feature film. An exhilarating expansion of the My Little Pony world the characters you know and love are on brand new adventures. Oh, I misread that. That's an off-brand adventures. Also. <laughs> off, <laughs> off on brand new adventures. <laughs> they're on off-brand adventures. Wow. So they're actually advertising being out of character or something? No. Advertising bootlegs. <laughs> These crummy bootleg adventures. <laughs> We're not learning about friendship at all. <laughs> this isn't about friendship at all. Uh, in comic news, IDW announced a bunch of comic stuff at Hascon because that did actually happen recently as well. Yes. Which we talked about last week, but more stuff happened. As- yep. So yeah, like there's a whole lot of stuff in here talking about the upcoming comics. Yep. Let's see. There's a new holiday special for this year. Yes. Or by any price, let's see. There's a uh, issue 61 was revealed. Part of start of a new part two part storyline. It's gonna be, the story's gonna be United Nations type gathering with a whole bunch of different creatures, and then something happens at the conference. That's the plot of Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> Another piece of artwork revealed for Friendship's Magic. Um, it's a cover for issue sixty, uh, Legends of Magic number nine. Cover was revealed, and there was a panel looks like for let something. Let's see, yeah. Work on Legends of Magic number six. And something about this is story's IDW's chance to tell a story about zombie ponies. Oh boy. Yep, zombie ponies. Oh, right. And uh, apparently the holiday special mm-hmm. is by the same person who wrote From the Shadows arc. Ooh. Yes, with Shadow Lock. James Asmus. Yep. So, yeah, like I said, a bunch of news. A preview for the movie adaptation book is out and basically spoils the entire beginning of the movie. Oh no, the beginning. I know. But yes, it's out there if you want to go look at it. It's there. Normally we wouldn't talk about these weird just screen caps from the thing, but... They're kind of significant with the movie. Also, a preview for Legends of Magic number 6 is up on iTunes as they are expected to be. They want to be. Yes. And Equestria Girls News, the Equestria Girls short Steps of Prep is up on YouTube. Pep. Yep, it's there, as expected. Mm-hmm. 
starting to get near the end. Last big section of news to get through. Netflix apparently has a happy birthday short featuring Fluttershy and Pinky. Mm-hmm. It's basically those two saying happy birthday to the viewer. Someone yep. recorded it and put it up on YouTube. There's a link. Hopefully it's still up by the not time. Not the greatest you know, recording either. Cause they- it's not that great of a recording, especially when you switch windows in the middle of recording. <laughs> But yes, it's up, and you can at least get an idea of what it is if you don't have Netflix to go and see it. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of Season 7 and 8 stuff was dropped at HasCon. Yes, we talked about it already, but yes, some stuff we weren't able to get to because it wasn't there yet. Yes, it wasn't up just yet. There is actual recorded clips of upcoming episodes, including Marks and Recreation. There are clips of that. Yes. Particularly the song from Marks and Recreation. Yes. The full whole thing, song. The full song. Yes. It's the fifth song of the season. So yep. that means that means no song in the finale. Yep. There's also some various clips from season eight episodes mm-hmm. and some general news about season yep. eight. And screen caps. Or, yeah, because they're, they're, they're playing caps. stuff from season eight or season seven. From yep. a, the, There was a like a commercial reel or whatnot. Yeah, they're playing upcoming season seven stuff. Yeah. What was it? Let's see. There's some some info that came out for season eight. Uh, look for a cheese sandwich cameo. Yay, cheese. Uh, GM Barrow wrote in a season eight episode that she's super passionate about and is her favorite episode overall. Maybe more book tie-ins like Daring Dunn. Uh, Josh Haber's favorite pony is a great and powerful Trixie, apparently. Derpy will not get featured like episode 100, but she'll be around more likely more than season seven. There will be two parters. So, okay. Parters, plural. Yes. yes. And that, that's more or less it. Yep. So, like I said, just a little bit of season eight news, but nothing super spoilery, unless you go and look at the pictures. Yeah. And some more movie poster images have been released that they've been doing on Twitter. These ones have sort of an old comic book style, like the dot dithering. Yep. Kind of neat. And apparently some theaters are doing early viewings for the movie, including a bunch of theaters in France and Germany, as well as a few contest-based ones in, so far, San Francisco, New York, and Denver. Mm -hmm. Those ones in the the U.S., they are contest-based. I'm not certain about the ones international. I think those ones are just, you know, time events. I think the Germany one's like a brony viewing event thing. Yeah, it's an early event. Multiple theaters. Yeah. I don't think that one's contest-based like the U.S. ones are. Like the San Francisco one's like a raffle thing, stuff like that. Yeah. So if you're in those areas, you might want to go check them out so you might be able to get an early viewing. It, the, the, the French one is not a contest either. Double checking yep. that. It's a, just a first come, first serve on the tickets. Yep. And earlier this week, there was a Facebook event with Twilight and Pinky where they talked about the movie and such. It was kind of interesting. Apparently, it was live, but yeah. it was like a face rig system. Hmm. So it was a little bit janky at times if you go oh, and watch yeah, the recording. It's like 20 some odd minutes around there. And it's up on Facebook. But during it, they previewed a little short clip of song from the movie, Sia's Rainbow, which has now also been released for purchase and is up on iTunes and is up on YouTube. Well, it is up on iTunes. It is up on <laughs> iTunes for purchase, but it, I meant to say YouTube. So you can go and listen to it on YouTube as well. Go listen to Sia's song. Yeah, or wait for the soundtrack to full sound to come out like I am. Yeah. Speaking of the soundtrack, more details of it have popped up on Hasbro's store, including mm-hmm. full track listing and description with the back cover. Yep. RCA Records. Yep. Three more stills from the movie have popped up. They're fairly spoilery. Mm. Although contextless, so... Still spoiler. It is kind of spoilery. This one in particular is pretty, pretty, pretty big spoiler about something that happens in the movie. This is the one with... I would say, I think there's multiple. Don't say anything. I'm not saying details. Just everyone knows Tempest is in the movie. Yeah. I can't remember if there was one or more that were in there with Tempest. Yeah. Yeah, there are spoilers in there. Yes. I think one of them is kind of a big one. Just like last week, there was a big spoiler. Let's just drop this, whatever. And an all new trailer for the movie has been released. This one does have a little bit more focus on Tempest. Yep. So, and it's pretty cool. New trailer. Woo! And. It's showing that Tabitha probably had so much fun with her character. Oh, yeah. <laughs> with Rarity. Oh, yeah. Tabitha that was had fun. so much fun with that. Last bit of movie news. 
Apparently, some theaters are already selling tickets. Yes. So far, Fandango in is selling tickets for movies for theaters in Texas mm-hmm. have popped up so far. We might be seeing more soon. So keep, keep an out. eye out. They are showing up, and they're probably going to sell out quickly. Maybe. We don't know, really. It'd actually be kind of cool if they did. Because, I mean, you know. On popular. one hand, yes. But on the other hand, it's like, that would it suck if you don't get to see it because it sells out. <laughs> yeah. But you know it'll be successful if it's constantly yeah. selling out. No fret, you could just go a different day. Yep, yep. You might not see it on release day, but you will eventually get to see it. It's not like you won't ever see it. It's not the end of the world. It is the end of the world. It's the end of the world as we know it. And last bit of news, a preview for next week's episode has been released as is normal. Mm-hmm. So yes, that's the news. I told you there was a lot of it. Yeah, there was. There was means i got to rush through this. Yes, so moving into our discussions, we got three comics to talk about, so get to that, Nemesis. Chop, chop. Tell me what to do. I'll tell you what to do. Oh. I'm leading this episode. I'll throw you out. <laughs> anyway, movie prequel number four, the final prequel comic. Once again, Ted Anderson, Andy Price, and Heather Breckel. The final frontier. Yes, yes. Very funny. But not really. <laughs> anyway, uh, this one's actually about Tempest. And, well, this has Tempest wandering through the sand, a desert, and, oh, wow, there's a crashed airship thing here. What happened? And then she finds the, the MacGuffin. <laughs> MacGuffin. Yeah, the MacGuffin. The, uh, what is it? The, this, what is it called? Something. Misfortune. Something Malachite. Malachite of Misfortune. That's what it was. Yes. Yeah. She winds up in Kluge Town and whatnot. And, yeah, she then, well, find, then the Storm King starts coming after her, so she tries to run away. And in the process, she meets another pony and all that stuff. And that's more or less as far as I'm willing to go without spoiling anything. Yep. I still like this. It's not the strongest of the prequels, but it's comics, but it's still pretty It's still pretty interesting. It is. Gives um, us a little bit of backstory on yeah, Tempest. Yeah, Tempest particularly. Uh, someone who probably needs... I suspect, though, I think we're supposed to get more backstory stuff with other media. There's something else that they're doing with Tempest to show backstory stuff. But they allude to something, something about her past. Yes. So that's interesting in of itself. So it's also got some really nice artwork in it. There's a really cool shot with a in there that uh, has a bit of looming in it. So yeah, lots of cool artwork in here. Um, just yeah, it's just also some interesting, I guess, uh, creature designs for the other characters as well. So lots of good stuff here. I, I like I said, it's probably the weakest of the four prequels. There's, it's kind of it takes it's kind of slow in many ways. But it's still pretty interesting in its own right. Yep. I'll echo your statements on that one. Also, I got the uh, Star Trek cover. I did not get the Star Trek cover. Which is cover anyways. I did not get that one because I'm collecting the Fleeks ones. But I did get the poster of that cover. Aren't you special? I am special. I I got number 42. Wrong franchise. I know, but it's still cool. Yeah. So that was uh, prequel four. Um, So that's the final prequel novel we're done. Well, yeah, <laughs> comic, but they're done now, and they're, I guess the trade paperbacks out and everything. So if you want all four, they're actually really good. So yeah, all four of them are really good. So go pick them up. Yep, yep. Sell, yep. I guess help flesh out the movie, but hopefully not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. They don't seem to be necessary at this point, but still, you never know. Um, but anyway, other comic that came out last week, Legends of Magic number five. This one is about Somnam, Somnam, Somnambula. Exactly, Somnambula. See, who we've never seen before, right? Never. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, once again. Sunburst is there trying to read about stuff. He can't pronounce it either. And Pinky shows up. Everything is ruined. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Pinky decides to read the story to her because well, he, needs, he needs the voices and everything. And yep, Sonambula is... This is, takes place right after the story from Daring Dunn, more or less. Yep. And there's a giant snake. And mushroom, she has to take mushroom, care of it. Mushroom, mushroom, And she gets vored. I mean, oh swallowed. I was waiting for that, too. <laughs> yeah, she gets swallowed and she, then she helps save the day. From inside the snake. Yep. Snack. Snack. Big it's, snack. Yeah, it's actually it's actually pretty fun. Sonambula's personality is just Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I like right. this. I like this fleshed out version because, you know, she kinda is not you know, that's you know, still no voice because it's a comic, I mean. It's a comic. You're not gonna get voice work. You know, I wonder if that was sort of a, a subtle joke. Oh yeah. You have to do this when Piggy's saying, Oh, you've got to do the voices even yeah. though there's also another Didn't bit where I have um, a voice in the episode. Yeah, there's also a bit where uh, let's see. Oh, this is kind of Pinky was summing summing up what happened with uh 
with Alt Dash and, every, and AK Yearling and everything. And uh, there's a bit where Sunburst is uh, talking about just kind of like, what? Just confused. It's like, hmm, it was kind of a messy episode. <laughs> then again, Pinky's explanation wasn't great. But then again, but anyway, yeah. It's also a pretty interesting one. I it like is it. an interesting one. I like it. Anyway, I think I'd pick pick it up. Yeah it's, a, yeah, it's a good Legends of Magic. It is. It's good. I think it's actually probably better than the actual story from the uh, episode. Ouch. Yeah, I'm sorry, but the, 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 the story the episode is fine, but this I think it's better. Sorry, not sorry. Ouch. Yeah, I forgot to actually say who forgot to say who actually did it. It was um, Jeremy Whitley, uh, um, Brandon Hickey, and Heather Beckel. There you go. There you go. And final comic. Yes. I told you I'd rush through these. <laughs> Friendship is Magic number 58. This one is by Tom Zaylor, or Tom Zaylor. Again, it might be one of those things. The H is silent. Agnes Garboska and Heather Beckel. So you've been doing a lot of work. Yes, it's, um, let's see, Twilight is working with Zakora and someone else. <laughs> someone else. I don't know who it is. <laughs> Can't remember. The name's in the... The name I don't remember is the name in there somewhere. <laughs> the name's probably in here somewhere. I just don't remember. Anyway, yes, they're they're working to find. They're looking at someone's um, Meadowbrook's old uh, notes and whatnot. Then they find a whole bunch of unsent love letters, and they decide they find out about this one special flower. So they find her uh, descendant and go hunt down the flower. And Twilight gets kind of obsessed with it. That's pretty much it, really. That's pretty much it. That sums it up quite well. Yeah, it's okay. I think. Nine out of ten, it's okay. <laughs> right, sure. Uh, I think it's just, it takes a while to get anywhere. Just, there's a whole lot of nothing at there's times. There's a lot of words. Yeah, there's a lot it's of words. There's a lot of yeah, words. It's particularly in the beginning. The beginning is really egregious about that. Um, yeah, it's dialogue it. heavy. Uh, there's a little joke. I like some of the jokes, like the talking funny. <laughs> the core the tor- the tor- the talking about Fluttershy talking to animals is strange, and the other ponies just look just at her. looks at her. <laughs> right. <laughs> she talks strange. Um, the artwork's really nice. It's um, yeah, Grabowska's art is really nice as usual. Uh, I believe though, oh yeah, it's Philadelphia, which I think that dragons and ponies living together again. Yep, huh? That's the thing. And what was it? I was trying to, yeah. Also Meadowbrook because she's one of the Legends of Magic. In fact, at the advertise at the very end of this is the advertisement for the next Legends of Magic comic, I believe, and um, that will be on Meadowbrook. I think that was actually the end advertised at the end of Legend of Magic four or five, but yeah, Meta Book's coming. Yep. So again, Legend of Magic's crossing over to everything. Everything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this one is um yeah like I said it's very slow but um it's okay. It's not a particularly strong story but it's a passable story. Yeah. It's also kind of just interesting how they went with Twilight. It's like Twilight's uh why Twilight was obsessed and it's like okay yeah it may make sense in character. Yeah. I it was like just it. really dialogue heavy. Yeah, that was the big thing. Was just, it's really weird. Gotta get through the dialogue in the, in the beginning. Particularly in the beginning. It gets it improves as it goes on, but it's really dialogue heavy in the beginning. And it's kind of, whoa, okay, whoa, calm down. It's like half some of the panels are just word bubbles. Yeah. So calm down on that. But, uh, yeah, so that's why the thing is, it's very slow. It, particularly in the beginning. It, it picks up pace a little bit later, but still, it's like a little bit to get through. So it's not the greatest, but still... It's still nice in a way. It's also a standalone. There's no further story from here. So, uh, yeah, that's the uh, comics. Uh, two, high, two I recommend definitely. And one that's, yeah, it's pretty old good. Don't d- don't go out of your way, I think. Pick it up if you see it. Don't go out of your way for it. Don't overpay for it either. I believe this is also, is this the Leak Fish ship one? Or was that? Uh, that's number, I think that's Legends of Magic number six. Oh, okay. Le- Leak Fish has a... I couldn't remember. She knew she did yeah, one of them. Yeah, she it, she did a cover for Legend of Magic number six, and every time it pops up for sale, it sells out within minutes. Yeah. I so that's... I still haven't been able to pre-order it. Yeah. I think I've got just a normal version of that because I forgot about that. Oh, well. I haven't pre-ordered it at all. That's that. Yep. That's the comics. So we'll talk about the actual episode. So, yes, it isn't the main thing about you. So, quick synopsis. Starts out, Rarity is going through town helping ponies with their aesthetics as she preps for a main shoot with photo finish. Ends up talking to Pinky at Sugar Cube Corner and 
or she's throwing a party and gets silly string everywhere. Really bad silly string, including... Sticky kind. Yes, sticky, extra sticky silly string. And gets it in Rarity's mane and everywhere else. She freaks out. They go to Zakora to get some potions to help clean up. One to remove the silly string, one sh- for shampoo for Rarity. And they accidentally get them swapped. Rarity ends up removing half of her over half of her mane. She freaks out. She goes through town and people treat her differently, causing her to freak out more. Ends up her friends help her get her confidence back and get her out of her emotional dump. She ends up going for a punk rock mane thing to fix it. Things go well. And ends up she ends up in the photo shoot anyway, and just things go well. And then they remember Pinky exists. Yeah. And has a sugar cube corner full of shampoo. More or less. But everything's okay. <laughs> yeah. That's more or less it. I thought it was... I actually really enjoyed this episode. I, I did. It was fun. It really yeah, was. For um, the most part. For the most part. <laughs> I, I It was funny. It was fun to watch. Yeah, it, I it do have nitpicky episode. things to get through, but uh, I think I know what nitpicky things. Starlight showed up. No, that's so not that's it. One. No, that's not it. <laughs> no, it's just it, although that wasn't really appreciated. There's nothing wrong with it. She, she wasn't. Did she, didn't really, here. she didn't really. She didn't really nothing to add to the story, though. Neither did most of the other characters. They were just kind of little pieces here and there. Well, they did actually did actively add to it, in a sense that they did. She stuff helped out to with them. magic wasn't necessary that was kind of ex what's what the word i'm looking for <laughs> superfluous everything could be superlative because not necessary <laughs> everything the rest of the main six did beforehand didn't come didn't result in anything anyway so technically everything was superlative anyway i still thought it was pretty well done yeah i still i have nitpicky things nitpicky. then what are your nitpicky things um the whole fact all oh, the whole the thing was like the whole reason twilight and stuff can't help at all is because magic doesn't work very well on mains which is a weird un just a weird little extra rule that seems to be thrown in there just for the sake of oh we can't fix it in three seconds because it's really extra weird because way back when twilight magically summons mustaches with no problems whatsoever and now suddenly you can't really do anything with hair magically because it just always backfires because it has to come from somewhere. Yeah, uh, it is a little bit of an odd thing. Although she did have to practice really hard on the mustache. Not really. Yeah, it Initially, was supposed yes, to be like but... a big cumulative thing that she finally was able to get it to work. No, but no it wasn't. Way. It was a whole thing of just a whole spell. Like, here's a list of cool things I can do. Huh. Just bam, done. And then later she just casts it, no problem, done, done, done. So now suddenly it's a weird thing of like, this is this is one of those things that, because H- Haber wrote this episode. Um, this is one of those things that I think this has always been one of Haber's little uh, flaws is that he has a tendency to kind of he'll write a competent sto- and well done story. The problem is he forgets to make it fit with the universe he's writing in sometimes. And this is one of those examples where he just kind of he, it's weird too because he calls back to the very first episode with the uh, sea dragon Steven right? right and the whole main thing and so it's kind of weird that he kind of forgot that Twilight did magic with hair and suddenly it's a rule that no magic doesn't work well with hair it's just kind of weird just to make this work. It is, but think, how would you make it work? It, it's one of those magic is kind of a, oh crap, how do we deal with this? Yeah, I know, but it's just kind of... um Without it, you would have just been able to resolve it immediately. Yeah. Just magic it back and now we wouldn't have an episode at all. I know. So we have to do something. I know, but I'm just saying if you can't given make the it work... Options, with, well, uh, given the options, I'm, I'm of an opinion of you can't make it work within the universe's preset rules, abandon it. You can't, you don't just modify the rules just for the sake of one story. And that's my opinion on things. Well, magic, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough one because I'm kind of glad we have this episode. Yeah, it's, it's nice. A good, it's a fun episode. So I wouldn't just... want this episode gone. And magic has never There's really There's other had... ways to do it. It's either you could just simply have Rarity doesn't know that kind of magic and just don't have Twilight and Starlight appear in it because that's well, the easiest way to Well, then you'd also get, well, you can't you just go to Twilight. They still don't have them appear for some reason. It's that simple. She's gone for whatever reason. Yeah, that's I, a, I think a, no matter what you do, it would come across contrived. I think that's the thing. That's a contrived, a contrived though that fits within the pre-established rule set. It's still contrived, result. but it's, it fits within. That's my thing. Is it's better just because it's stop, it fits within pre-established rule set. And yes, that means sacrificing pride appearing, but I don't think there is a good option. It's just I think that's a better option. Uh, 
I don't think it's a big enough problem to throw a, a, a stink it's over. It's one of those things that okay. it's super minor, really. And I don't think it's it that is a big minor. That's why I said it's a nitpick. Yes, I don't think it matters one way or another. It's too minor. Um. Also, just like, why does the core make both potions the same color? <laughs> well, you don't pick the color of your potion. There's a better question: be why didn't you put them in different bottles? <laughs> that or dye one. Well, because that might screw up. It's it's a chemical thing. You don't want to add things to it unless you know it's going to work. Or just and like they said, magic not is put weird it next on hair. To each other. <laughs> yeah, there, there's it's like Here you could put a label on it. You could or don't make it the, the same bottle. time. That would be the thing. Don't make it the same time. I don't know. It was kind of weird. It looked almost like. It, they had to be made at the same time because it looked like they were produced from the same stuff, which is also which weird. is a little weird. But we have never established potions. Anyway, and way, potions just, are always weird. Anyway, that was just one of those weird. Things you could have put them in different bottles, avoided the whole problem together altogether. Yes, but then we wouldn't have had an episode. Yeah, a lot of episodes are like, well, you could have just done this one little thing different. I know, and not just in our. our I'm just show. getting weirdly. I'm just getting nitpicky. You I are. did like it. Yeah. Uh, I did like it. It's, it was a lot of fun. It's just, um, yeah, just these little things just stand out, and I can't help but notice. And I, it's not gonna. I have to say something. <laughs> I can't just note be quiet because I liked it. Honestly, I, I think those are the only. I, like. I think those are the only two real nitpicks, uh, or at least the major ones. Oh, why the baby major still babies? <laughs> <laughs> ah, even said there's a year. There's a one year anniversary of their first sneeze, which is okay, Pinky. Sure, <laughs> okay, but. <laughs> Why are they still babies? Soon well, I don't know. Babies sneeze really, really, really young age, so they still could be really young there. But, st- yeah. They're eternal babies. They're just eternal babies. You might <gasps> want to take them to a doctor there, Cakes. Everyone's eternally the same age. No one, well, except for the CMC. They're the only ones who can grow up. <laughs> Season 8, they're going to be fully aged up with everyone else, and everyone's going to be the same age, and then things are going to get weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you have what any other nitpicks? No, I don't think I do. I'll probably think of something later. Or you'll say something I'll remind me. Oh, okay, yeah, that, that thing. Yeah. But I got nothing else, really. I just want to get those out of the way real quick. Although, uh, uh, why didn't you just wear a wig? They, yeah, because I think the wig would have been noticeable. Yeah, to agree, but... It's, so oh, was the punk rock again, so is that. that. Well, then also, again, she whole... did drop, end up dropping out of the photo shoot. Yeah, there was a photo shoot. The, the photo shoot was about Maine, so I was just like, you're wearing a wig. That's cheating. You, yeah, you know, so that, that's why, like, with Apple Jacks, it's, yeah. a, it's a Maine shoot, not a... That's, big, that's Sparrow, or whatever. That little bird just kept showing up <laughs> and doing something to mess things up. Really. It, yeah. All the time, like, it's like, what are you doing, bird? The J. Was it Blue J or something like that? It was not a Blue J because it was red. Then a Cardinal. Wasn't that red? <laughs> I don't like know. A... It was a generic bird shape. <laughs> bird. It wasn't a sneaky eagle, though. No, it was not that. What was the other things I was thinking of? Uh, I don't know. The beginning, when the f- the flower stall first it was nice. You know, the r- the flower trio for one. Yes, the flower trio is back. Not panicking. Well, they were kind of starting. They to were panic. starting to panic. <laughs> they weren't going to all the horror. <laughs> the horror. The <laughs> horror. <laughs> they weren't doing that. Um, it was interesting. Um. Nice little dodge there with guarding Bon Bon. I'm talking about she's getting flowers and it's like for someone special. And it's like <laughs> someone, some pony special. I won't say who. It's like nice dodge there, guys. Uh. Although I noticed Lyra, um, Bon Bon, or not Bon Bon, uh, Final and Octavia were standing together in line. Yes, they were standing together. Because they are roommates. This is interesting. They're buying flowers for, they're in line to buy flowers for some pony. Yeah. It's Mayor's Day or something. Yes, but but Vinyl and Octavia were there together. Yep. So were they buying flowers for others or themselves? I know. Because usually you don't go with the person you buy the flowers for. You usually get them as a gift to surprise them with. Not always, but I don't know. Did they just attempt to sink the ship? No, I don't <gasps> think so on that one. No, because we couldn't actually tell what they're... Although again, they're buying f- main flowers that match their mains, not yep. the mains of the person they're buying them for. That's going to be difficult so for can't... Octavia. Black flowers, <laughs> usually that's uh... <laughs> black well, rose. <laughs> oh jeez, I mean blue is well. You well, I think what's blue you have to die anyway. So anyway, you have to die. Diet. That D Y E die. <laughs> Since die. we're talking about black flowers, <laughs> you were talking about black flowers. <laughs> Got to clarify that a little bit. Uh, so that was just kind of oh, you had to dodge. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh well. 
Yeah, although oh, it was wow. nice, it was um, Andrea or Andrea Lemon playing Bon Bon again. Yep. Also, like you said, the the beginning there was a callback. Uh, Apple Bloom talking to what's yeah. his face. The, yeah. I can't remember the name of that character. Yeah. The one that's based off the one actor. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. I'm trying to remember. I cannot remember his name, but Something's it was callbacks to Perfect Pair. Yeah. And we he also, also had Grand Pair. Yeah, Grand Pair was also there with Granny Smith. With Granny Smith. Saw him in the back. Yep. So that was kind of cool to see those again. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they talked about, f- talked about photo finish throughout, but she didn't actually appear until the very end in the it magazine. It was a picture. Yeah. Yeah, because she was hiding in the bushes taking pictures. Yep. Like a, pop- like a paparazzi. Or anytime you want to get a candid photo photography. Like a paparazzi. <laughs> Scumbags. Sometimes it's what you got to do to get the shot. Scumbags. Depends on the intention. Yeah. Oh, I did like the bit where the, well, this, uh, this, um, Crystal Empire thing, real quick. Oh, got a geez. crystal main, and then the guy shrieking in the crystal <laughs> the, the, empire. The high pitched scream <laughs> was great. Oh, and Davenport was in there. Because Bills and Sofas. Yep. Oh, everyone's like, sales have been down lately. Oh, the, uh-oh, Ponyville co- economy has been in a slump. Oh, no. So basically, Rarity is the linchpin of the entire Ponyville economy. No one can run a business without Rarity around giving oh, advice. Wow. How do these ponies survive? I think it's just Ponyville. Ponyville is just weird like that. Can't a lot. All the restaurants all have to all follow the same restaurant style because of one critic it's because they can't think for themselves right <laughs> but ponyville still is weird yeah <laughs> it's a weird place it is a weird it's a strange we don't go there anymore <laughs> how many references can we throw in <laughs> all the references yes but canter a lot it's a it's a strange place. <laughs> it's a silly place it's a silly place <laughs> uh but yeah this this episode had so many great little parts so many faces. Oh yeah, my god. This is why I say Rarity has the best faces in the show. Because of episodes like this. Yes, but other episodes with Dash in it, Dash has great and faces. And those too. episodes that faces Rarity pulls are better than those faces. It's only I because think. you don't like Dash. No, it's because Rarity makes if I was saying stuff like that, I'd be saying, Oh, Twilight makes a bad face and well, Peg makes good faces, but Rarity makes the best. Uh, I think we'll just agree to disagree on this one. Because we won't get anywhere. That's what you if we say argue. when you're wrong. <laughs> We're not going to get anywhere if we argue on that one. <laughs> Our points won't change. But Rarity did have amazing faces. Yes. It was. Including <laughs> after the magazine being sh- literally shoved in her face. But... <laughs> literally. Yeah, Rarity. Going cross-eyed and all that stuff. And just, yeah, I've heard also the bundling herself up in her little cloak thing. It was <laughs> great. And just peering out angrily from underneath. <laughs> Oh, Zakora was in this. <laughs> Zakora was in this. Yeah, it's, right. fine. it's great to seeing her again, um, doing the rhymes. Um, other things. If there was a couple uh, rhymes were a little. Mm, you know, little, hard it is to rhyme like that. No, there's still time, a little, couple little rhymes here. They're a little shaky. You do what you got to do. Watch yourself. <laughs> you do what you got to do. Yeah. I'm still waiting for the day they make her rhyme with orange. 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 <laughs> I guess purple will be the hard one. Purple. <laughs> Purple and orange in the same sentence. She just wanders off. She just stops and wanders off. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) Yeah, so that was the thing was, um, oh, and then even the the trek to Zakora's place is just yelling, screaming at the, uh, eyes. Yep. Because Rarity's not in a good mood. Not even the Everfree monsters want to deal with her. (laughs) Especially with that main. Rarity's scary. Especially with that main. <laughs> well, she didn't have that bad main. Yet. Well, she had that. <laughs> she string did have there. a bad one there. It just she had wasn't... silly string wasn't bad. It was just a dirty main. And though that's the other thing. That's the other nitpick. Is like, why don't you just? If it's just the core literally told her, you just need shampoo. Well, you need this fancy shampoo. The core made her a special shampoo, because the normal shampoo that Rarity has wouldn't have done it. Would have still left it in there. I don't know why she didn't try it in the first place though. She probably was thinking it wasn't already knew it wasn't gonna work. Because she knows her shampoos. Perhaps. I don't know. But does she know her silly string? Pinky does. Pinky does, but does Pinky know very Pinky, shampoos? They, Pinky agreed they needed to go to Zakora to get it out of the house, so... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Let's just Although say it's a little interesting. Lots of the vague sh- justification in this episode to make it work the way it did. Yeah. 
This is that one nitpick. It was a little bit interesting. Rarity needed the shampoo to get the silly string out of her mane, but it wasn't able to get the silly string out of anything else in, in exactly. Sugar Cube Corner. <laughs> exactly. But yes, it's also interesting just like without Rarity, with Rarity's in the cloak, no one cared. No one cared. It's like, who cares about you? You're just some no, no one. You're just didn't, well, I think it's because, yeah, they didn't recognize her. They didn't know Still, it was it's just like they're treating her like, well, poop. Yeah, they're kind of treating her like garbage. Just because, well, it's like, a, wow, rude. Yeah. Yeah. Although you might be able to say it would be kind of stretching it. You might be able to say it was just from her perspective because she's freaking out. And that's a really is a stretch. It is a stretch. I would not buy that. Yeah, it's, it's just kind of weird. It's like, then again, we've seen Ponyville ponies are kind of fickle. and They are really fickle. And also will turn mean at the drop of a hat because you have wings now or something. Or because they didn't like how you think your lessons are in a book are boring or something. That's yeah, it. ponies are just fickle in it's general, just I think. It seems like they just change moves at the drop of a hat. Like last week's episode with the, the southern equestrian ones that just yep. say yeah! one thing and they immediately Ooh. just flip-flop. Yep. I don't know, ponies are just fickle. Yep. Must all be moderate voters. Centrists. Centrists. <laughs> Both sides are equal. <laughs> I don't know who to vote for. Well, <laughs> <laughs> too real. Oh well, <clears throat> too real. It was fun. Yeah, it was. It was a really fun episode. It was a lot of fun to watch. And, and I was really, also. <laughs> I did like Rarity's punk rock. Yeah, look. Rarity punk rock. It's like, that was that was awesome. That was unexpected. That was awesome. That's the second time we've seen a punk look in this show. Yep. Because Twilight has does punk light sparkle. Yep. So although that was a little bit different, <laughs> a little bit, but still. Punk band, do it. This is, and we already know Rarity can shred. So Maybe she's just I'm pretty sure out. people are going to start making artwork of that. Oh, obviously. Almost I think I've certainly people some. are going to start making Questry Girls versions of that. Oh, okay. yes. That'll be fun. She plays a guitar. Why not give her an guitar, actual guitar? Uh, she can also play Rarity. Pony Rarity can play guitar. We know this. Yes, we saw this. She can shred. <laughs> mm. Pardon me, kind of like... Maybe they should have just, you know, kept her like this for, like, the next few episodes. Yeah, that would have been awesome. Because, yeah, the awesome. end of the episode actually takes place a couple months after that because she her hair is back to normal. Yep. And then the magazine came out. and Yeah. We had a talk with Photo Finish. Yeah. <laughs> a talk. <laughs> yeah, a talk. Remember mm. by the scrub. That doesn't sound... <laughs> that doesn't sound ominous. <laughs> Yeah, it's just kind of like, hmm. I still kind of wish yeah, exactly, like, like, like the next episode she still looks like that. Because, like, I gotta look, I gotta live, look, I just gotta commit to the look for a while, okay? <laughs> Everyone else in Ponyville did. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of other ponies were wearing the look for a while. The punk look. Including Derpy. Yep. <laughs> it actually colored her hair, too. Yep. Orange. Orange. <laughs> Door hinge. Door <laughs> hinge. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Also, uh, there was a that was a funny bit. Yeah, just Davenport. I forgot Davenport was kind of a jerk. Oh, I made this custom, you know, sofa to order, oh, and oh, hey, what you sell offering money? Sold. I don't care. Sold. I don't care if we had it on reserve. Rude. Yeah. Oh man, that would be like one of those things of um, I'd be livid. Oh, you sold it because someone else offered you more money, even though I commissioned that. Yep. That's grounds for. That's grounds for a court case. <laughs> Depending on how the commission works, yes. I'd be checking your contracts. Yeah. Mm. Also, there's the... I think he was supposed to be Irish, the uh, fan guy. The fan. Uh, this thing... The fans he's, he's had no... He's a huge no, metal fan. Mm. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> the fans Denver. had no electrical cords. They're magic. They probably use those like batteries or something. Mm. They're batteries. I think some of them did. Like the, the big one that he took out. Oh no, the big one he took outside had a cord to the pedal. That was it. Yes, there was a pedal. So it's like what? they're there's, battery there's powered. Power. They're magic. You don't have to explain it. <laughs> it only goes so far, though. They're magical batteries. Just like a, a, maybe a, a magic gem in the back. I guess There's a magical crystal Still gem or something. So far. It's just one of those things. Also, you 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 noted this. Um, we already said I have to call photo photo. Finish. Yes, I have to call. So. Do they have phones? Do they have phones? Because that's never really been a thing before. But yes. they also have things like movie theaters and stuff, so... Technology is weird. Yep. 
They'll Hodge communicate Podge. by a letter delivered by bird, but they also have movie theaters yep. and trains that are sometimes pulled by other horses. Once. <laughs> yes, that was just a weird one. That was just kind of a miscommunication. Yeah. But yeah, technology is weird. I think what they've said is technology is what they need it to be. Yep, that's always fun. Yeah. I don't know, is that the theory of, oh yeah, the theory that was, um that, that mirror from the reflections arc in the comics Basically, the reason technology is so hodgepodge in the question because they've literally been just taking it from other worlds and don't re- they just kind of reverse engineer it and they don't really, so they didn't come up with this else. So that's why it's all over the place. That's why you get, you know, Manhattan and such yep. with their big modern buildings yep. and Ponyville. They, they just mimicked other stuff they don't really fully understand rough. it themselves. Yep. They just mimicked it. So that's why it's all over the place. I like that th- it's explanation. It is a good explanation. I like it too. Only a handful of ponies really take the time to study it. Like, why do teacups have finger holes? <laughs> and then you have mugs that have hand holds, but they still use them. They put their hoofs through them. <laughs> why do they have... Well, they still use doorknobs, too, but it's like... Yeah, it's You wouldn't a design thing. a doorknob like that if you had a hoof. They have one of those lever... They tend to have those lever doorknobs. Some of them do. Some yeah. of them don't. Any which way, it's weird. It's weird. Technology is weird. It was a fun episode, though. It was. It was fun. It really was. I enjoyed it, even if it was a rarity episode. Yeah. Have her boutique full of ice cream. Ice cream in the dark. In the dark. Uh, anyway, I think we're rambling. Yeah, so. we are. It was fun. Yep. It was fun, yep. even with my nitpicking. I think it's time to move on. We do have some fan content to talk about. Yep. So, Quickly. I'll start the, off with music. I've got two songs this week I'm going to feature. First one is Rockin' Brony's symphonic metal cover of For the New Lunar Republic. This is it's just a really good cover of a classic song so yeah the, the instrumentation in it is really well done and i really love the solo bit in the middle it's like a guitar and then like a, a synth solo in the middle that's really cool yeah yeah I, I like the bell and choir opening a lot that was really nice uh there's a lot of great guitar work in it and the solo was really awesome too in the middle because um very it, it stands it stands out from the original version quite a bit right there because there are a ton of covers and remixes of this song it's one of the classic songs so yeah mm-hmm. you're gonna have to do something a little different to stand out <laughs> from all the different covers out there it's good go check it out the next one I have is TCB's Atikiphobia. This is one of three of TCB's uh, from TCB's new EP. That's about the T- the CMC. A lot of acronyms going on here. <laughs> yes, and this this one focuses on Scootaloo, right? And its name it, it means the fear of failure. Yeah, I I love this song. It's a really good one. Probably my favorite of the three, but this one's it's got really good vocal chops, and I, I like what they did there. And it's it's very emotional you can really feel the emotion that it's trying to come across and it's got a very powerful and driving flow and beat to it so it's not like calm or mellow but it's driving and powerful right yeah like you said there's some really interesting vocal stuff in there i'll i'm gonna do something that's i don't know make you upset probably uh, probably sounds like there's a large chunk of the song where it sounds like they're just saying ottawa over and over again 
Oh, because of the, the just the vocal yeah, splicing. Ottawa. It's like two pound egg white all over again. No, it's not as bad as two pound egg white. Then, but there's a part right about uh, two minutes and forty seconds of the song that's really awesome. It's um, when you hear it, you'll know. Yeah. I like what they did. I liked the the use of vocal, not just the chopping, but the actual vocal clips from the episodes. Mm. So I think yeah. the vocal chopping's heavily used. Stuff from Hearts as Strong as Horses. But it's really good. Go check it and the other two off of, off the EP. Right. Those are the songs I've got. You've got a fanfic, though. Yes, I got a fanfic. Another one. I uh, said I had this last week, I think. And yeah. You did. I just want to split this one off because it's In Hindsight by Aragon. Yes, I didn't want to do Aragon twice in a row. <laughs> Even as good as an author they are. Uh, but I'll just start off with what the summary is. This is a story about Rarity's hips. All good stories are. <laughs> It's, it's not wrong. It's 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 really accurate. It's a one shot about just shy of sixteen thousand words, and it's basically Rarity thinks Applejack and Rainbow Dash are in love. Twilight disagrees, and the two of them more or less stalk them, them to find just to all prove each other wrong. And that's more or less the gist of the story. Uh, I mean, there's obviously far more to oh, it. There is far more going on. What the story secretly about, which I won't tell you. But yeah, it's it's a really funny. It's <laughs> it's hard to put into words, really, because it it it's not exactly what you'd expect. No, but not exactly. Though once you start reading it, you can sort of start piecing together where things are going. Yep. So it's not like unpredictable. No, but it is fairly predictable. But it is different. It is kind of all over the place. Mm-hmm. But, but that's just the, 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 how the story works. Yeah, Aragon, the thing is, what it's the strength is it's Aragon's usual strength is the dialogue. It's just yeah, the dialogue is very hilarious, very <laughs> silly stuff. <laughs> and of course, there's, what was it, the um, the cloud? What was they? What did Luna the call that? The snooping cloud. Yeah, the snooping cloud, which is illegal is, to look at. <laughs> it is illegal to look at it twice. You get a second look. <laughs> you cannot acknowledge it. Nope, it's illegal. Pain. But yes, it's. Re- I highly recommend if you haven't already, go check it out. I'm apparently like Bear Aragon because the popularity of their fix tends to just pop right onto the featured box right in for almost in minutes of publishing. But still, if you haven't seen it yet, go look at it. Trust me on this. It's funny. It's pretty good. It's, it's pretty, pretty good. good. It's great. And yes, I already have another fix lined up for next week. I'm pretty sure you guys are going to be pretty excited for that one. Yeah. You already told me what it was, and I'm yep. I'm looking forward to it already as well. Yep. Been looking forward to it, so I'm yep. glad it's it's coming. It's here. So that's my fanfic this week. No uh no new updates. No updates. All right. Well, that's end of the fanfics. That's end of fan content. That's the end of the episode. So, as usual, if you liked what you heard, you can find all of our episodes, past, future, present, at pony four one one dot libsyn dot com. You can also find us on iTunes. Just search for Pony411. Go subscribe to us there. Have it auto-download. You can also rate us, so give us all the stars. You can also find us on Stitcher. Stitcher.com or on the mobile apps. Just search for us, Pony411. We're also on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Pony411. All of our episodes are there. You can listen to them. Go comment on them. Like the, them. Subscribe to us there. You know what to do for YouTube stuff. You can also find us on Google Play. Play.google.com slash music. Search for us there, Pony411. You can find us. We're also listed on Ponyville Live along with all of their other shows, so if you use that, you can find us there. It updates with the YouTube. We also air on Ponyville FM every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. So tune in then or at other times. We've got a whole bunch of good music there along with live DJs and such. So check them out. If you would like to get a hold of us, you can email us. We are pony411podcast at gmail.com. So send us comments, criticisms, suggestions. If you want us to take a look at something that you found or that you're doing, email us. We'll take a look. We're also available on Facebook, facebook.com slash pony411. Go like our page there. We will post updates there when they happen. You can also find us on Twitter. At Pony411, go follow us. It's probably the best way for quick little communications here and there. See us tweet nonsense or ROC. Or bad jokes. Or bad jokes like you like to do. That was horrible. It was amazing what you're talking about. It was horrible. It was great. It was absolutely horrible. Yes. That's why it's great. It made me want to pull my hair out. Oh. 
Like, that's any better. No, it wasn't. I'm not claiming it was. Anyway, yes, those are the best ways to contact us. You can also find us on our personal Twitter accounts, though. I am at Alcatraz with a 7 instead of T and an underscore at the end, and he is at Nemesis Prime 1. Metroid! Yes, lots of Metroid on his end. And just one, sorry now, but still. Who knows what will happen between now and when they actually hear this. Yes. Anyway, that's the end. Hope you liked what you heard. Hope you tune in next week when we talk about the next episode. Health of Information. Health of Information. Yes. It's core and Fluttershy. Yay. Until then, though, remember, please, pony responsibly. See ya. Three left. Three left.